today in the shop I've got this pretty sweet Silvertone 1454. Um, I'm guessing it's uh, early 60s. I don't know yet. I'm going to find out. But it's in here because, well, you can see this middle pickup is missing. And uh, the owner uh, decided to take it out himself. And uh, here's the pickup right here. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. Silver foil. Um, he's already taken it all apart. He just hacked the wire. Here, there's the wire. He just uh, unscrewed it and hacked the wire off. And then he uh, drilled the rivets out. I'll show you the inside kind of pissed me off because now there's the inside here's the bobbin he's already stripped the wire off it and uh, now I've got to rewind it put new wire anyway I thought this would be a fun project to film because uh, I've never seen a YouTube video of anybody winding a, one of these vintage silver foil road Yarmond pickups so anyway I think I'm going to show that and then uh, I'll be setting this thing up because the guy wants to sell it so I'll be getting it back together and setting it up it's in really good condition I might buy it myself. Nice guitar. So, I thought it would make a pretty cool video. Okay, so, let's see here. This is the bobbin. Now, it's a metal bobbin. pieces of metal glued onto the magnet. Now this magnet is uh, north up and all the pickups are going to be north up and all the pickups are going to be wound in the same direction so there's going to be no hum cancelling and it's not going to be wax potted either so but that's how they are. That, that's what gives them their unique sound I guess. Um, I had to get new rivets. were not easy to find. There's the rivets right here. They're a little long, I think, but uh, I can fix that. And then I had to find some vintage single conductor wire here to match the old wire. There you go. Pretty close match. Yeah. So, it should be fun. Let's get started. By the way, this is the, the wire I'm going to be using. Focus in there, there you go. Uh, you know, the originals came with a, a poly enamel, but I'm going to use this uh, single poly. It's going to sound exactly the same. Well, that's what I'm using. If anybody wants to know. While I'm thinking about it, I've had a lot of people ask me what I use for my soldering station and my multimeter. Well, here they are. I use a Hakko soldering station. I love it. It's not the most expensive one, but it uh, works great. And I use a Velman um, multimeter. Meter. There it is. So that's what I use. It heats up uh, instantaneous and uh, you can really control the temperature. Works awesome. So first thing I have to do, or I did already, was this corner here. That is going to be where the ground wire connects. And then this, and so I had to file that down so it will really grab good when I solder on the ground. 
and over here on this side this is where the lead wire connects uh, the hot wire solders right on well the one end of the copper wire solders right onto that little tab right there so I filed that down so it's nice and smooth also when it's uh, winding you don't want it catching on the solder so you have to do a really careful job and then you have to put a piece of tape over that and uh, what I'm going to do to wind this since I have no idea how many winds were on this if you can look on the bobbin you can see the old line uh, where the old copper used to end. Well I'm just going to match that. So I'm going to wind the new bobbin until it fits right right on there. You can see it goes all the way around. There's a nice line on there that shows me where the old copper magnet wire went. So I'm just going to duplicate it and hope for the best. Alright now I have to solder one end of the uh, the uh, wire onto that little tab right there. So I won't bore you with that, but that's what I'm going to do. So next. now I've got the wire soldered on to that little tab, and then I covered it with a piece of tape. See that little yellow piece of tape right there? And then I put a few winds on by hand. See the copper wire on the on the bobbin just to get it started. Okay, there's the tape. This is so the wire doesn't catch when it's spinning. And this is very thin wire. I mean very thin. So now I'm gonna stick it on my winder and start winding. Alright, there's about 800 wines. Um, I don't want to bore the crap out of everybody, so uh, I'll come back when I'm done. There's the coil all wound. Um, I got about, I don't know, let's see, 8,200 wines, and I was shooting for about uh, 10k ohms, and that's right around what it came in at, 10.02. So, uh, that's right where I wanted it. So now I've got to attach the lead wires and uh, put the rivets back in and get her hooked up. But anyway, there's the bobbin all done. Alright. Great. So, let's see if I can get this to focus. This is how I connect the uh, tiny 44 gauge copper wire to the lead this little piece of copper tape right here and uh, it's just shielding tape cut into a very thin strip and then I soldered two wires to it it's good to go now I'm going to tape up the bobbin and uh, hope I don't break it there it is all done just have to install it and dust it out, but uh, pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to test it here and see what we get for a reading on this thing. Oh, 10, 10,000 K. That's just what I was shooting for. So, there you go. 
One Diamond, Row, Pick Up, Back in Business. Thanks for watching.